This beautiful canal is in the middle of the city of Nîmes in France. And it's not necessarily built for transportation or anything else. It's actually part of probably one of the most important sites of the Enlightenment. And it was the first public gardens built in France. And it is here to teach people about the Enlightenment. So if you look very carefully at this garden, it's symmetrical. Both sides are the same. It looks like somewhat like a cathedral with the trees as those giant pillars you would see in the cathedral. The gates are representative of the central doors of a cathedral, which by tradition would not have been open except on special occasions. Here, there's only one gate and everybody comes through it. So it's making the person the idea of the elite. This is a cathedral of knowledge. Beautiful statuary, but it's not sacred statuary, at least not to Christians. This is all on ancient Roman and Greek mythological themes. Oh my God, it's marble. Oh man. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> He's great. In an ancient medieval cathedral, the high altar was the sacred spot. It was the place in which the priests would elevate the host or the wine and the bread to make it the blood and body of Christ. Here it's been replaced. Instead of a priest, you've got an allegorical figure of a woman pouring water out. It's the fount of wisdom, as it would be. So, a complete secularization of this sacred space as well. But it's teaching people lessons about going back to the fount, going back to the beginnings. This wood, this lake, this river, it's all contained. This is reason. This is man creating everything at his own scale in a very rational way of putting all this together. And once you get away from these formal gardens, the paths wind, there's stairs. It is a wild place. Exactly the opposite of these paths down here. These paths are flat, straight, symmetrical. The paths up there wander through the woods as if it's in a wild area. And those paths eventually end at the top of the hill, which is a grand tower. And that tower was part of the original Roman fortifications that were built here very early on in the reign of Caesar Augustus. So it really does reflect an Enlightenment idea of a sacred space. But it's open to all. This is the fun part. When they came to here, they would not only see the Enlightenment ideals, but they would also see these old tomes, these old books come to life. When they built the garden, they left in these rustic ancient Roman pieces so that people could learn about them. This was a sacred space to the Romans, their temple to Augustus, the fountain that was here, it was a sacred space to the Romans, and it became a sacred space to the people of the Enlightenment, basically for the same reason. For the beginnings of reason and logic came from the Romans, came from the Greeks. And of course, they could then, after learning their lessons, trying to learn Greek and Roman Lat uh, uh, Greek and Latin, they, in a book, they could come here and feel it and see it and smell it. And this is, the, uh, this is the graduation of their geometry, mathematics, rhetoric, logic, all here in these stones that they had access to. These canals had an economic purpose as well as an aesthetic purpose. These weren't just to be pretty. But in fact, these canals were an important part of the economy. It allowed for a huge amount of water to be saved here in the town and used by one of the most crucial industries of this town, which was weaving. Here in Nîmes, they created a very thick, 
heavy, strong cotton fabric. It was kind of rough, uh, and it was dyed particular colors, especially blue. And it was exported throughout the world and became famous throughout the world. And it was called by its French name, Fabrique de Nîmes, which, if you listen to it very carefully, de Nîmes, denim. Your blue jeans have a tradition that comes from this exact town, and it was helped by these waters. <laughs>